All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do auto scroll in KLWP. As you can see, there is a blue rectangle scrolling across the screen, and I'm doing nothing to the phone. Basically, what this blue rectangle is set to do is set to scroll across the screen um, every 10 seconds. And it resets back. Notice it's always starting from over here, and it moves across. And, I, and it's a formula. Um, the formula tells it to scroll across. And then once it gets to here, after a certain amount of time, it'll reset it back to here. And I'm going to show you that in KLWP. Um, also, before I do that, notice if I scroll to a different window, um, it's going to do the same thing. This is still a window. It's a blank one. Um, but you'll see the rectangle scroll here. And you'll even see it. Look, it just continues going whenever I go from window to window or screen to screen, whatever you want to call it. So inside of KOWP, let's create another one, and I can show you step by step how I did this. So I already have um, an overlap group down here, but I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to call this uh, scroll is what this blue one does whenever it does scroll across the screen. And right now it looks like it's paused, but nonetheless, I'm going to create a new overlap group, and I'm going to call this overlap group scroll two. Now let's go ahead and create, and you can do, I mean, obviously you can scroll weather, time, whatever you want to put inside of this overlap group, it will scroll, but I'm going to do it, keep it basic here. So inside of that scroll two, um, I'm going to add a shape, and I'll do a rectangle, and I'm going to make it the same width of the screen. I'm not going to move this one down. I'm going to leave this one across the top. I'm going to make it a little bit taller. Um, let's just go to like. I think I was at 180. If I want to keep them the same size, but it doesn't really matter here. Just a little OCD kicking in. Um, we'll change this color to something like a red. It's good enough. And then inside of this overlap group that we called scroll to, let's add some text. And right now it's showing time, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to, I'll just call it scroll two. Because I'm going to show you some cool effects that you can do with the scroll as well. Alright. Let's make it a little bit bigger so we can read it. Perfect. Now, you want to animate the entire overlap group. That's why I created this scroll to overlap group because I want to animate the whole thing. I want to animate the rectangle and the text inside of it. So I'm not, I'm not animating just this or just this. I'm animating the whole overlap group. So let's go to animation and let me show you. Um, how this thing works. So here's the formula that we're going to do. Um, before we animate, however, let me reposition the overlap group because this, this blue one down here, I have it uh, positioned way over here. So I need to do that before I actually uh, apply my animation. The rectangle looks good. Let's just slide this over to the far left because what I want this one to do, I want it to scroll from left to right, not right to left. So I moved it negative 720. Basically the whole rectangle is off the screen. No matter where I scroll, notice the red rectangle is off of that screen. So now we're ready to apply the animation. And here's how you read this animation. If the seconds are greater than or equal to zero and the seconds are less than five. Basically between zero and five seconds on my clock, I want to apply the animation. Or, that's what that line means, or if the seconds are between 10 and 15, or if the seconds are between 20 and 25, or 30 and 35, and so forth. Anytime my seconds on the clock are between these intervals that you see here, it's going to apply this animation. Now I do have it lasting for five seconds, that way I can apply a nice smooth anima animation that you can read, it, is just, it doesn't fly across the screen. And let's look at this formula, how to, how to do it. So applying an animation to the entire overlap group, um, we want to react on a formula. So let's go look at the formula now. The formula needs, it's going to return um, when the output is 1 or F, the animation will move forward. When it's 0 or B, it will move back to the start, or it can reset by using R. Now, I'm using R to reset because I want that, this rectangle to move back to the left side before it scrolls to the right again. But you could have it move forwards and then backwards as well but I chose here um, to reset it. Now this one, so if any of these conditions are met, 
remember all these ors and we're between these certain time intervals, any of these conditions are met, um, it's going to return an output of one. One is going to make this thing move or animate like we want it to. So let's just copy and paste this code in there. All right, so we got this copied and pasted in here. Uh, same formula as you see right here. And now every five seconds we should see this thing happen. Now notice what's going to happen. It's not scrolling like the blue one is. It just disappears. Um, but it's going to scroll at the same time the blue one does. It's faster. It's not going all the way across the screen. So let's adjust our time. Now 10, the duration, I think 10 means one second. So I want this to last for five seconds. Um, basically the duration that I made up here. You don't have to do that, but I want it to be, I want it to take up this whole time frame. That, look at that, that's a lot slower. It's still not going all the way across the screen though, and it's just disappearing on us. So that's why I was thinking, I'm thinking that 50 means five because anytime we're between zero and five, it's going to scroll and then bam, once it stops, it disappears because it's resetting because it's falling outside of one of these time intervals. All right, so speed. This is what's going to allow us to go all the way across the screen. I'm just going to double the speed up to 200. That should take it all the way across that screen. Okay, and that, that one's a little, a little funky, but now the next one should be nice and smooth. It should run the same as the blue, except in the opposite direction. So five seconds, bam, it's reset. You can't see it reset, but it's back over here. That's what that R is telling it to do. So I hope that makes sense right there. Now, there you have it. Let's go ahead and save this, see how it looks. And then I'm going to show you one more thing. All right, so let's let, let it do a smooth one now that it's fully applied. As you can see, we are scrolling that. And again, I'm doing nothing to the screen, not touching it or anything. So here's another cool effect. If you have some other little pieces on your wallpaper, for example, see, notice here, no matter what I do, um, it's always going to scroll in front of whatever I have. And this is where you can actually move those overlap groups around. So notice it's scrolling right over this stuff that I have here. But if we go inside of KLWP and move those overlap groups around, we can add even more uh, cool effects, I guess you could say. But back in the root where we can have all our things, suppose I want uh, the blue rectangle that pops up here. Suppose I want it to be behind the weather and the clock, but I want it to be in front of this thing here. So, um, let's see, scroll. I need to move, the, the scroll is the blue rectangle. So I want it to be behind. Now, since it's at the bottom, it was in front of everything. I want it to be behind the weather. So I'm gonna put it right there. But I want it to be in front of network. So I'm moving my overlap groups around. It's gonna be in front of these. Um, Excuse me, I'm getting, yeah, it's going to be in front of these, but behind these. And notice the blue one now is going to be behind my weather and my clock, because I have my clock, or I call it stuff. But notice it's flying in front of my networks. That's what I called this overlap group right here. I called it networks. So it's going to be in front of it, since it's positioned beneath it in this little menu. Pretty cool, huh? Um, suppose we wanted to take the scroll two that we just created, and I'm going to move it up. If I move it to the very top, it's going to be behind everything. Um, so you'll see it barely slide back here, the red one. But maybe we want it to be in front of the time. So I'm going to move time up to the very top. So now it should be behind date, but it should slide in front of time. Pretty cool. So it's a neat way. Um, uh, quite honestly, you can customize this fairly quickly depending on what you put inside of your wallpaper. But that's how you auto scroll um, based on some time conditions in KOWP. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.